actor's studio. Right? Yeah. It's got it a does. nice little vibe in here. Yeah. Because you fit the part, you look like, like a successful, confident Hollywood <laughs> actor who's about, to, who's about to put us on game right now. <laughs> look like she's about to tell us how it's going. So if you want to be successful out here, <laughs> first thing you want to do is... Don't listen to me. <laughs> That's dope. Now, you're originally from New York. What part? In Brooklyn? I was born in Brooklyn. I grew up in Harlem. Oh, dope. Harlem is dope. Harlem is good, yeah. I love, I love Harlem. I love Harlem. I mean, yeah. I love New York, but... Smokey Swore has a spot up in Harlem. Yeah, it's Smokey good. does have a spot. Yeah. I've never been to Staten Island. I've been there one time. To play, yeah. Uh, they have a like, batting cage and like oh, go-karts okay. or something like that. Okay, yeah. I've never time. been. I'll never know. Wow. Yeah, you ain't missing too much, really. I figure. <laughs> what about I'll... Queens? When I alive? when I have to fly out, yeah. But is it Laguardia? Yeah. Or JFK mostly. Yeah. 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 That's what's up. No, I used to work in Long Island City right there. Oh. So okay. I've been in the car business for years. Ah. So I, I did sold not know Cadillacs that. in Long Island City. I sell Range Rovers out here now. Oh wow! But Do you I'm get a discount? Just, Yep, I'm black. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you get a discount? What's your discount? Why yeah. am I here? To get a Range Rover? I got you. Let me know. Pick out the color you want, girl. I got you. No, seriously. What is your discount? You're not answering my question. Well, I can I can get you a good deal. I can get you taken <laughs> care of. All right. I can get you taken you care of. You sound like a salesman. That don't sound like a That's discount. That's what I do, girl. Yeah, that don't sound That's like a discount. That sound like... Because <laughs> it ain't like no Banana Republic. They say, like, yeah, I get, you know, 10% off. But that's what I'm asking, but you know? Because, it, because it's going to vary depending on the car. Oh, okay. Like we have, you know, Land Rover. And we have Range Rover, you know, and there's different demand and supply for each of those. Like, for example, we came out with a new Defender. It's like the rugged kind of Jeep looking one. You probably haven't even seen them on the street yet. They've been out for like four months. But those were selling 5000 over sticker, you know, mm -hmm. so that ain't the car to get the deal on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we have our Range Rovers, which is the full size. And we got the Range Rover Sport, yeah. V6, V8. You know, yeah. we got different options. Yeah. So depending on, hey, I just want a V6, something simple, I don't need another crazy. It's like, all right, bet. It's a seventy-seven thousand dollar car, you know, th you know, three thousand off, something like that. That's a good deal. Our, we, our, we might own the car for, you know, four forty-five hundred off or something like that. But it's been it's been interesting. I've been doing this <laughs> shit for like twelve years. Yeah. yeah, it's been interesting. I sold Lexus in Texas. That rhymes. Yeah, it rhymes and shit. So it's been a journey, but. I'm glad that it kind of gives me something to do outside of, you know, comedy, comedy and shit. Yeah. So are a lot of people buying cars? Surprisingly, yeah. Right now. When I got that, I didn't know what to expect, but people are still that got their bread are still doing well. Yeah. Yeah, their lease is coming up. Yeah, I don't want to drive an Audi anymore. I want something more expensive. I'm like more expensive. Mm -hmm. I'm in there struggling, like more, more expensive car. Yeah. It's like damn. All right. Well, you can do the range over here. It's, only fifteen hundred a month, <laughs> you know? and they're like, "Okay, yeah, do you have it in white?" I'm like, "Really? <laughs> okay, sure." And they they going about their way. They happy as hell, but I'm inspired because I'm just like, "Let me get my shit together to where I can come in, you know, make yeah. these kind of easy decisions." Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. What did you do, uh, po, po, before you were blessing us on screens? What was your career path? Uh, before I was a comedian, I, I actually um, went to school. I got a degree in math, which I don't use at all. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Like, I moved here shortly after I, I finished college, maybe like six months after I finished college. My friend, my best friend at the time, she was like, I'm going to move to L.A. to be famous. Mm. And I was like, damn, when I think of all the famous actresses, I don't know none of their best friends. Yeah. So I was like, I guess I got to, I got to. Right. And I really thought about it, like, <laughs> who? I'm finna be kicked who, out this Yeah, right. like, when you think about it, right? Like, who's, right. I don't know, who's Angela Bassett's best friend? We don't know. Right. Who's Julia Roberts' best friend? We have no idea. So wow. I was like, oh, I guess I got to go and make my way, too. Dope. Um so yeah, I came here and was kind of like, you know, figuring it out, and I just stumbled, I stumbled into um, into stand up. That's fire. Yeah, that's dope, man. Well, yeah. we just been talking to shit, but I ain't hear no action. I know, or I know. I'm like, man, we rolling, are we rolling this? <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> so I to get to, to your story. You, right? <laughs> I wanted to tell you about. <laughs> I saw this fight in, in Target, and I normally would not talk about fight. Like I was that person yeah. when World Star was like a big thing. Right. I was that person. Like I'm not, I'm not engaging. Right. I'm not engaging. <laughs> right, right. This is setting us back. I don't do this. Right. Yeah. 
But this fight that I saw in Target, first of all, this is what you got to know about me. I love Target. Yeah. I love Target. Yeah. Whenever we get like those, you know, like black Twitter tweets, like, you know, like boycotts, I'm like, please right. don't let it be Target. Let <laughs> right. be Target. I love Target. Like when I'm bored, I'm just like, let me go to Target. Right. Mm -hmm. So I go to Target. This was like beginning of pandemic. Gotcha. But like, so maybe a month into pandemic. So everybody already realizes like we got enough toilet paper. We don't have to scramble. <laughs> right. Calm down. Yeah, you know, right. but we're getting used to a new normal. Like stores don't really know how to enforce social distancing right. yet. All of that, right? right? So I'm in Target just looking at greeting cards. This is what I do in Target. Like, let me right. read some greeting cards right. today, right? Right. right? So I'm reading greeting cards. And I feel this man like push past me, Right. Older white man pushed past me, and I'm like, he got bad energy. But I'm in this new place in my life where I feel like if you got bad, like, I feel like I got a lot to lose. Right. That's what I think about every right. time it comes to a confrontation. Real I'm shit. like, what all do I have? And do I want to look? Can, will right. I risk this? And that determines, like, the choice that I make. So, message. Right, go ahead. <laughs> I give you a little. A little right. Gem. She dropping jewels uh, too. Go ahead. So, I'm like, <laughs> All right, this guy got bad energy, whatever, I'll let him go. Yeah. So I finished reading my um, greeting cards. I go to like the um, self checkout, right? Gotcha. And the guy is in line in front of me. The one that bumped past you? The one who bumped past okay. me. He's in line in front of me with his card, right? Gotcha. So he's pushing up, like going further, and I hear this woman say, Al. And I'm like, did I just hear somebody say, Al? So he kind of moves over, and I see that there is a woman standing in front of him. That's how close he was standing Man. to her, that behind him, I couldn't even see that there was another Gosh. person there, right? Gosh. So it's this young, young girl, white woman. I, I honestly don't know how old she was. White women are hard for me. Like, I don't, you <laughs> yeah. know, like, I don't could be, be no 17, like, could be 25. Who yeah, don't know I, like. I would even say 25 or 62. Like, I just don't even got know you, what you, white women... <laughs> Like, oh, how old are right, you, right. you know? Um, and, and, and the worst part of the spectrum, like, I feel like black women are like that, too. Like, yeah. you always 45, and people be like, are you 27, you right, know? Right. But white women, it'd be like, are you 42? It'd be like, right. girl, I just graduated college. And it's like, <laughs> right. Ooh. Right. With the crow's feet yeah. right there? Okay. <laughs> it's something about the lack of melanin, unfortunately, yeah. with white women. Um, but you know. You know, um, so it's this, it's this white girl. I, I would legit say because of her style yeah. that she was in her 20s. Gotcha. Now, was she 22 or 29? I have no <laughs> idea. But what I do know is she had on a trucker hat. Mm. When's the last time we saw a trucker hat? She sounds younger just by hearing that. Was she, she wearing American Eagle? Let me know. What's... She didn't have on American okay, Eagle. Okay, no, I was no, going to no, say no. 19. No, no, no. She had on a trucker hat. Gotcha. I could totally see her extensions. Damn. Yeah, a lot of people be thinking white women don't wear extensions. Right. Totally saw her extensions. Damn. And she had a fake butt. What? And she had on like some crop, like real baggy sweatpants so that you was like, you going to see this booty jiggle because wow. I paid. no draws. Right? I, I can't come All right, sorry. Too many details. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I, <laughs> If you was a dude, you'd be like, no yeah, draws, yeah, nigga. I feel right? like that's something that I didn't quite get to. <laughs> guys, guys, but guys. I looked at her like, mm, I bet she got a black boyfriend mm -hmm. that's trying to put out a mixtape. <laughs> right. I bet you that right, is what she's right, right. That's just what she looking looked like. Looking like a dream supporter. Yeah, that's exactly what she looked like. Somebody that got daddy issues and, Damn. you know. Right. So he pushes her with the cart and she says, what are you doing? Right? And he says, well, go. And she's like, well, I can't go. Now, at this point, the reason why I'm saying it was a month into the pandemic is because Target is just figuring out how to social distance. They didn't have the stickers on the ground They didn't have the stickers on. So now right. it takes an employee to say, hold up, now you can come. Right. Right? So she's like, I can't go because I'm waiting for somebody to tell me it's okay to go. Right. She's trying to abide by this new normal. Right? right? So he's like, psh, psh. Just go, like, almost like trying to push her forward. So she turns and faces him. She turns and faces him oh, and cocks back. What? She cocks back. Now, you know. Hold up. I got the mask on, but I am smiling. <laughs> right. This dude that brushed past you. No. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I hate to say this, but I was so happy that she was white. and Because right. just white on white, right. you know, first it's of okay. all. It's okay, right. Not that it's okay, but the guy, the guy specifically, I felt like if you added any other uh, di diversity to right. it, 
he would have went off with a slur. Like, I didn't need them to be trans. I didn't need them to be black, right. Spanish. I didn't need them to be a little person. Because right. he just seemed like he was ready right. to hit you with something hateful. Right. But the fact that she was just like, a white girl. Why did he white? He he really <laughs> could only. I mean, the most he can he said bitch because right. that's all he that's all he could do was right. oh yo oh, you bitch you right. you know yeah. so they had that on deck. <laughs> I got a I got a you bitch right here. Yeah, Look. like he you know it was just so, like it, so I'm 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 like watching with damn you know, I'm just like, you just got your belongings yeah you said. like I'm like oh shit it's going <laughs> and, and you know you know what threw me actually yeah. I know I keep saying it's a month into the pandemic <laughs> right. So we ain't going crazy yet. Right. We chilling. Right. We thinking a month into the pandemic, we all realize we got toilet paper. We thinking two 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 months and we it's the summer about to come. Right. And we all gonna be back outside. Exactly. Again. They said COVID we thought it was go gonna away. be temporary. We, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? We thought it was gonna be like Ebola, hit two people in Texas, and then leave. <laughs> that's what we thought. Watch your news like, damn, that's crazy. You get what, so exactly, what we doing next week? Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. So. So the fact that he was kind of going crazy, yeah. I was like, oh, sh is this the start? Right. Like, you know, like the, the pressure ain't even on yet for right. you to be in the target right. acting stupid with your white sister. Why? This your white queen. This your white queen, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Damn, Becky. So she turns and she cocks back, right? And she yeah. said, if you touch me again. And she left it there. Now, I was impressed. Damn. I was, she left it there. I'm like, she do date a black girl. Right. Shout out to DeAndre yeah, at the yeah, house. Exactly. So this makes sense. <laughs> she left it there. Damn. The, 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 the white man. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to like, psh, like, like get it out his face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like almost like I'm going to just smack you out of here. But not intentionally smack yeah. you, but kind of like brush you up. Mm -hmm. When he did that, she punched him to the left. Damn. Right? And his face went that way. Damn. But what was so glorious about her next move <laughs> was that before he could fully go all the way, like 180, right. you know, she then mushed him back this way, Damn. like ping pong. Like, and I'm like, who, whoever, Deontay, whatever, right. he taught her well. Because white people don't mush. That is, right. That's something that's so specific. Way. Yeah, culturally, I've yeah. never seen nobody else mush right. besides black people. I've just never right. seen it before, right. you know? Um, that's a good fact, too. I've never seen it. i never seen nobody mush. Huh. Yeah, like, ever. You're going to have me YouTube in the night. Asians mushing. No, Asian Asian. mush. They don't no. do it. You don't see it. No, you just, you never <laughs> see it. Something, but it's something that just culturally, but I don't even know if, Mm. Africans do it. I feel like it's a black, black thing, thing, like an African -American, American thing. thing. Yeah. Like, you know what? I ain't gonna punch you. I'm, right. gonna, I'm gonna mush you just to let you know. <laughs> right. Say That's the want. warning. Don't like, I'm gonna mush you. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. take my whole hand and push you. Up, you know. Um, so she did that. The crate. The funniest thing was he he let out another bitch. He was startled. He said, "Oh, oh you bitch!" Right. Like <laughs> he was startled. Right. Right. And How I was dare like, you? "Yeah." Now I was like, "Yeah." Now I never. Did like, you pull your mask down so you could see better? No. No? No. That's the thing. No. You right. know how Tyra Banks be like, you got a, a next top model. She's like, you got to smile with your eyes. Yo, right. my eyes were glistening. Damn. My eyes were glistening. Damn. I was, it was amazing. Also, I didn't want to, I didn't want nobody to ask me to be no witness. I didn't right. want to, I just wanted to spectate, nice. enjoy and, nice. and keep it moving, you know? Yeah. So he's like, you bitch. And she's like, and do it again. And I'm going to knock you out. Right. And she goes and starts checking out at, at her self checkout Damn. thing. Right. This fool. Had the nerve to then say, "I want to speak to a manager, sir." <laughs> that's that's when I'm confused. Like my eyes went from like real bright to like, what? wait, what? She, you need the cops. She don't work it. Like you right. only get the manager when you've been assaulted by an employee. employee right. You get the manager, you get a statement, and you get a lawyer if Man. you've been assaulted by a target employee. Right. She's a customer, sir, and you started it. He was like, I want to speak to a manager. I'm like, first of all, we don't even know where to, who the manager You about to get the manager beat up. You already saw what she could do to you. Right. Don't right. call the manager over here. Right. Manager came over. He was a little Spanish boy. He was like, well, you know, what's, what? what's, the <laughs> what's happening? Right. He was like, she, she hit me. And he was like, uh, sir, I could give. <laughs> you know what to say. He was like, sir, I, I could give you ten percent off your. Or... <laughs> right, right, what you want a coupon, nigga? Get your ass out here. Get out the room. Uh, and I just Damn. like laughed, Damn. and that story has pretty much gotten me through the pandemic. Damn, that's wild. Like whenever, whenever one, I go to Target like once a week, and I'm hoping for like a part two. Right. See um, her again. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe not even her, but like, can we get a series of like white people go wild in the Target? Oh, you know, like, can we off. get that? They popping off with. Have you heard about all the stories about them not wanting to wear the mask? Yeah. Oh, I take so much pleasure in that because white people are not used to being told to do shit. I, so to see them, man, God damn it, I can tell I have to come in here. And a lot of them, they made, they just want to, they don't want to be told what to do. Yeah. So they freaking out. So sometimes I see the news or the stories and I'm just like, ha ha, how the fuck do you think we felt? Yeah. It's, when we had to do all of this, just yeah. like, bro, put this shit on and sit down. But also too, because I do understand like, um, if you, if you don't believe in, if you don't believe in something, right? Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of what we do is, is a belief in something, mm -hmm. right? And so if you don't believe, first of all, there's been so much misinformation. Mm -hmm. And so if you really want, besides you just don't like being told what to do, you've been told all your life that you have a constitutional right to some bullshit you don't have a constitutional Man, right Man, I had his hand over heart. Right? Justice, liberty, and justice for <laughs> well, all. Oh, exactly. All that shit. <laughs> exactly. But then on top of that, let's say you just, for some reason, you have not had the life experience recently to believe that there is a real virus and that right. we're all at risk and blah, blah, blah. Right? right? So even still, if that is all true... I know I hit the mic. I'm sorry. If that is all true, <laughs> if that is all true, um, you could at least just be a reasonable person. Right. You know, like, um, I don't know. It, it, the people that don't wear masks and they want to come into, like, crowded places knowing that everybody else has like they don't care about public safety. Right. Because it's not going to hurt you. Like, let's say this is all fake. Right. What did you lose? Yeah, it's not gonna kill yeah, you. I to want wear motherfuckers to see my mouth. God yeah, damn it! Like, like bro. yeah, exactly. It's not gonna kill you. It reminds me of like the person that doesn't get up on the bus or the train for like the elderly person or the handicap. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just a certain type of human being. It's like I don't give a shit if I'm an inconvenience to the rest right. of it. And I just think that that's just like selfish. Yeah, it's just like how you unreasonable. What happened in your life? Mm -hmm. That that's so. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, sad. It yeah. made you just be completely unreasonable. Yeah. But that's what we're dealing with again. But it just goes to show you that black black people are have been resilient and have been tough because we are being dictated and told and how to conform and how to be conditioned our whole life. You know, so if y'all having a tough time with these mass things, how do you think we've felt having to constantly tailor ourselves, jump through hoops to get opportunities and to get you know, into places and rooms that y'all walk into and you don't have to second guess what you put on, mm -hmm. what you wear, mm -hmm. how you wear your hair, how you speak, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but these are things we have to think a lot about, a lot, a lot thoroughly through before we just, you know, have the same rights that you are. So. Yeah, black people don't be wearing masks either. No, nah, I, I didn't have see. Have you seen I've Atlanta? been to some functions. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching <laughs> some of my friends in Texas, Atlanta. even Texas. I'm just like, yo. Yeah, I'm like, Texas hit a million cases. Damn. But I mean, it's so, you know, a million cases. Don't really mean shit. If it's it, I mean, not. it means that it's just a million cases, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't, it's like, yeah, it's a virus and right. people going to get it. Exactly. But that you don't want people to be dying from it. Exactly. And that's the, that's the thing we're waiting on is better treatment, which from what I hear of the news, treatment has become getting a lot better. Uh, the treatment's been getting better. And obviously they got this vaccine that they finna drop like a mixtape on us. They yeah. say it's 90% effective and... Uh, I think that that's honestly is what's going to allow businesses to reopen once that, that's distributed. I think we'll start to go in the right direction, even though I feel like a lot of people, especially black people, yeah. ain't going to fuck with this shit regardless yeah. because it's like, we ain't doing that. For, you know, let's, let's see how it play out. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have a healthy distrust of, right. you know, the government, you know. I mean, I, we could go all the way back to slavery, but I mean, we could just go really close back into Tuskegee. We all know. Right. You know, but um, but yeah. See, even when the conversations get serious like this, I just think about that lady hitting that man in Target, and I just like, it is a wonderful joy. <laughs> hey, <baby. I'm> like, <laughs> Sunshine. <laughs> now you gonna have me singing that every time I go to Target. Now, joy. I'm gonna be looking for somebody. I be looking too. Like uh. I've had a few things happen in Target. Like one day I was in Target and Chrissy Teigen was just in Target, Damn. like like throwing a a, a a beach ball. I'm like, this Damn. is Target be the. Sh I need to come to the Target of your neighborhood. I'm, I'm in Glendale. I, my Target no. is boring. Yeah, go to the West Hollywood Target. Okay. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That sounds, West Hollywood got the action. You see, you don't know what to expect of West Hollywood. 
I know what to expect. <laughs> I guess you, I guess you do. Every time I go there, it's an adventure. I have a comedy show or something over there. I'm just like, it's just the crowd walking yeah. down the street. You yeah. got to be prepared for everything yeah. over there. Yeah. But overall, I must say, being uh, Louisiana from the South, living in New York, I'm glad to be going through this pandemic in a place like California. Even though we're dealing with issues, there's home, mm. you know, homelessness, fires and shit, but still, and the fact that we still are primarily a, you know, a, a more diverse, a lot more blue. I come from where it was very black and white, you yeah. know, in terms of racism. So uh, overall, man, these earthquakes, I'm just, you know, well, let's chill on the earthquakes. Yeah. Let me just kind of catch me off guard. Because yeah. I don't know what to do when an earthquake happens. Somebody needs to email me in what the procedure is. I just get up, hey, <laughs> I start looking around and make sure everything is straight. And it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Get, I in, get in the shower. We, I think. Ah, uh, in the shower, isn't that a hurri hurricane? Maybe you're right, you see? I think an earthquake, <laughs> I think an earthquake you're supposed to get in a doorway. Doorway. A doorway. Um, but I don't think that we've, I mean, earthquakes are scary, but like we ain't seen no earthquake yet to right. split the ground. You know, I feel like I've seen so I've many seen movies. The movies, about, it's yeah. the movies. The rock was like, just in one. What yeah, was until the earth split right in yeah. front of me, until sunset going half. <laughs> I'm good. Right. I'll be like, oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, exactly. I have trouble getting back to sleep after that, but I get past it. Really? Yeah. I just sometimes it just shakes me out of my sleep. I'm like, oh, well, oh, it must be an earthquake. Okay, I'm going. So you think I used to be here longer than me? That's all. I used to, I'm still. I don't know. I just get like, mm, how can I? If it makes sense to me, then I, then I don't. I guess I'm not scared of earthquakes because I do have irrational fears. Like, oh my God, I'm so afraid of rodents. Oh yeah. Even the cute ones, chipmunks. Oh, I can't do it. None. No. Oh, well, it's good that you left New York. You know, yeah, they be I out there. They they do be out. Woo, we moved oh, to my. whoa. Where was we at? Oh, Bay Ridge. We was in Bay Ridge when we first moved to New York. And let me tell you, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. We had some Popeye's chicken. Oh. And we had the bag just left over there. And we just laid up in the bed. And we heard that bag rattling. Said, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, you got a toe in this bag? And the bag was rattling. It's a rat. Straight in rat in the apartment? bag. In the Popeye's chicken, yeah. Oh, no. You know, so we, we, we had to move up out of there. Yeah, quick. yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. I remember this man uh, protecting me on the... On the um, Train platform. I was in Brooklyn, <laughs> okay, but I they can't. Be quick. Yeah, I can't remember what stop it was, but mm. I know I was on like the A and the C train oh, yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those rats was going wild. I remember, this, <laughs> I remember this homeless man was sleeping on the stairs, and the rats was just crawling on. And I started flipping on him, like you don't even care if the rats is on you, like I, cause it was like blowing my mind. Damn. And then when I got on the the like train <laughs> platform, they was just going crazy. And this old man, it was just me and this they be old in the man. They tracks too. Yeah, they be. I don't really be afraid of them in the tracks because right. you know. But if they're on a the platform or if they're on the train, right. that's like, right. I cannot do it. I right. can't do it. You're getting off at the next stop. Boom, boom. <laughs> Stand clear. Your ass to get I'll get off. Yeah, I'll get off. I'll get off. I mean, I, you can't really walk from Brooklyn, but I'll get right. off in, in Manhattan and just walk. Damn. Walk in the middle of the street. Damn. You know, like so that they can't because they love being where the garbage is. And Facts. Like, but this man, he took his umbrella and stood next to me and. Like kept the Shoot, rats the away, away. Damn. until the train came. Damn. And I was so thankful. Real and, heroes stand up. <laughs> yeah, this was like this was like seven or eight years ago. And when we got on the train, I was so appreciative of Damn. him. And it made me realize that when like if ever we find ourselves in some sort of apocalypse or whatever, how you really do bond with strangers yeah, over come together. Yeah, you right. know, like cause he was like my savior Damn. in that moment. That's the I hope he's watching this shit right now. He probably at the house one night like <laughs> I knew she was I knew she <laughs> didn't forget about me, dog. From fine to shoot you a DM tonight. I was that nigga. No. That no. saved you from the risk. He was so old. He was so <laughs> was old. OG? He ain't got no DM. Oh, okay, no. okay, okay. If he if he DM anything, he's telling his grandson, uh, do you do the Right, send him one of them Facebook send the, uh, uh, installs. Send the mail through the computer <laughs> like you be doing to the... Uh... Right. That's fire, man. So I must say also that I'm a, I've grown to become a fan of you too. Oh, thank uh, you. And I've been paying attention and following your career. And uh, I think it's incredible in terms of what you've been able to accomplish. And by from what it looks like on the outside looking in, staying true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, that's one thing I've kind of noticed as following you. You seem to kind of... Be confident and secure in who you are, and that's that's dope too. So, uh, you got a comedy uh, special or something that you shot recently with? I hope I'm not announcing it too soon or something. But you listen, if, if whatever you say, I don't know about it, so I'm waiting for a check. Okay, all right. Well, I ain't even gonna put it out there then. What you talking about? 
I said your company. Uh, did you shoot something? Was it Showtime or no? Hmm. It's one of the did. moments where you trying to build me up and we realize. Nah, I ain't you shit. trying to do it? No, I'm trying to do it. <laughs> was it Revolt? Mm. Nope. Okay. You finna act like you ain't did no comedy <laughs> shit up here today? Nope. Okay, the chat line's going wild. They tagging her and all kind of shit like, really? Really? So your stand-up you comedy about? and your acting career. Yeah, yeah. Don't be trying to be over there and be modest. No, I'm just... I, I, <laughs> we see upload. Like, we know you out upload here. Upload is cool. Upload is own. great. I yeah. love upload. Yeah, that's the... the I mean, that's it's a, a, a cool storyline. We was just talking about the your co-star. I forgot the girl's name. Who, Andy? Andy. Andy, yeah, yeah. She's super dope. And she yeah. was in... Uh, it was a Two Minutes of Fame, which I think that I had seen recently, too. Is that with... Um, Cat Williams and uh, was it Jay? And um, Jay Farrow. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yes, I did watch that. Yeah, that yes. was cool. Mm. Ron G was in that shit too. Yeah, she, she was, was like the bad girl. The yeah. bad guy. I was texting her like, oh, you, you the <laughs> right. villain? Oh, no, 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 right. we don't like you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, she be in the whole wreck over here. Yes. That was a good flick though. Yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed that, that series though too, just to kind of see the alternate reality, you yeah. know, and all of that. So you did a good yeah. job, man. Thank you. That? Thank you so much for watching. I mean, yeah. yeah, we go back soon to sh to start shooting the second season. So yeah. that's always nice. So I want to know, of course it's nice, girl, and, 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 and kudos to you. So would you say you had a greatest accomplishment in the how many years you've been doing this now? Is there like an... Bam, like, wow, this was probably the greatest accomplishment I've had so far. What would you say that that was? No, I don't have, I mean, I'm very proud of everything that I've done. Yeah. And what I really love about stand-up is um, I'm kind of, like, learning who I am yeah. through it, you know? Like, I've really come to understand myself because my stand-up, like, you know, as you said, it's just purely my perspective. Mm -hmm. And I've really... Everything is like, how do I, what's my view of the world? How do I feel about everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's really helped me understand myself. So just that personal journey that's happening is is really rewarding and sometimes um, scary because I have to face, you know, I have to face some of the things that are problematic mm -hmm. in, in my processing as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess the thing that I am most proud of is that, like, I continue to move Forward. I think the thing that's like wonderful about time is that you get to look back and you get to see like tangible things, mm. you know? Sometimes it's hard. I feel like like, you know how people just wake up one day and they're like, oh, I look different. And it's really because they've been looking at themselves like every single day. So it's been this gradual change. To, it's not until they see like a picture from 10 years ago and Man. they're like, damn. Man, Facebook reminders be getting me. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, shit, two years ago? You know? <laughs> but I, I feel like with stand-up, I feel like I have been doing, I don't want to say well enough, but I think that I've had some really good markers to, one, uh, reflect on. Like, this is the work that you put in, and this is what you've gotten out of it, and, like, the motivation to keep going. And I think that that's... So no... no one great thing, but mm -hmm. grateful for everything, definitely. Nice. That's dope, man. That's beautiful, man. Thank so you. It sounds like, because I live by these three words, and it sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. Embrace the process. Yeah. It sounds like you've learned to just embrace the process and the journey that you're going on to. So with that being said, is there a goal for you that you kind of have in mind as you're embracing the process and loving your journey and appreciating all of it? That's dope. But is there a place that you aspire to get to in terms of or behind camera, on camera, writing, stand up, or is there something that you really are looking to accomplish? Um, I hate to like sound cliche, <laughs> but I think that I'm looking to just fulfill my potential. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that is we don't really know what our potential is, right? I don't want to say like, oh, I want to like, oh, I want a TV show if my potential is greater than a TV show. I think mm -hmm. sometimes we name our biggest our biggest goals or, you know, what we want, and that's actually limiting, you although it seems short. very big, you yeah. know? So, I mean, I want it all. Mm. You heard I want that. it all. You heard it. You know, but I want, I, I want to maintain who I am uh, in, in the attaining of it all. Facts. Um, so yeah. That's facts. That's big facts. I'm glad you said that too. I was just saying yesterday, my little story talking about how, you know, we have to 
as creatives and artists now in today's climate, we have to be creative and building an online following, mm -hmm. staying consistent with content and what we're posting and everybody's going viral. So there's this pressure to get 100,000 followers. And I struggle with that because it's like, I get it, but I don't want to do anything that's not organic or not yeah. authentic to me, not something I can be consistent with. So you have to be delicate on to how you also put yourself out there and how you market and yeah. you know, distribute yourself. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I don't want to ever sound naive or too idealistic to say, oh, I want to have this amazing journey and you don't care about money. No, we want to live a comfortable life, Facts. right? Um, so yeah, I need for this career to support my lifestyle mm -hmm. and I can be a little bit <laughs> Go on, tell them. <laughs> right, fellas, she just told you, okay? Don't act like you don't know what you meant. <laughs> but I think that when I think about, like, overall what I'm trying to achieve, it's a certain legacy. Mm. And I think that that's important. I really don't care. It's so many people that got followers and stuff, but I'll tell you right. this. Every time Paul Mooney come on the screen, I be like... Right, right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I be like, Substance. I share it. About, yeah, it's like, right. it's just... It's just certain people. I mean, Paul Mooney is just one example. There's mm. many out there, but mm. there's also a lot of people, they could have 10 million followers and I could give a fuck. Right, right. Because they ain't talking about shit. Or even if they, right. I could give a fuck. Right. You know, but I just think, I think that there's a difference. There's legacy and there's like, yeah, I, I, I survived in a time or I did well in a time. Right. But then I think that there's, you know, like, his legacy. Dope, man. It's just that simple. I'm excited so, to see your legacy, girl. Me and to too. See you continue to thrive and grow and shine me and too. be all the things that you are destined to be and project, man. Me too. That's awesome. I me appreciate too. you for coming to the to the Thank show, you. to the podcast, Thanks girl. Thanks for having me. It's been amazing. Um, please, if there's anything that you have coming up, uh, and definitely let the people know where they can keep up and follow your journey. Um, if you haven't watched Upload, watch it. Watch it's on Amazon. It's an Amazon original. Um, and you could just follow me like on all social media platforms and my website is Zainab Johnson, Z-A-I-N-A-B Johnson. I have a podcast. It's called Honest Tea with Z, H-O-N-E-S-T-E-A with Z. Um, and oh, I have another podcast with a comedian, Sydney Castillo. Yeah, we multiple her... podcasts. In this Go ahead. <laughs> well, honestly, <laughs> with Z is just like it's just me ranting on. Like I can rant on anything. <laughs> um, and then with Sydney, we do a podcast called Just Friends because you know sometimes when men and women get together and mm -hmm. hang out and enjoy one another, people always are like they fucking, they fucking. They right, fucking. right. But actually, uh, we are wonderful friends to one another. That's right. And so we do a relationship podcast. That's dope. And we talk about. Just relationship stuff, and you know, Sydney be saying the dumb shit that y'all be saying. <laughs> we do be saying some dumb shit. <laughs> Shout out to Sydney. He wants to be up, the, he be up, up on the way. And anyway. I be saying all the stuff queens be saying. No, right. I'm kidding. I hear queen and she, I hear queen and y'all. <laughs> um, but it's but it's a fun time. It's a fun time. So so you guys can um, check that out too. It's it's live every Wednesday on YouTube and Facebook. Wednesdays at one o'clock. Bam. Just like that, man. Dope, yeah, man. Thanks well, so yeah. much for having me. No doubt, man. Yo, so it's been a wonderful show. Y'all, please follow and support this girl's career. Super funny. Make sure you see Uploaded too, man. You ain't doing shit in this quarantine. She's got some dope content for you to follow up and keep up with as well. They film a season two, so I'm going to definitely stay tuned for that. Anyway, it's been real. It's been dope. Thank you so much for tuning in to Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. It's your boy, Charlie Wilson. Look look at y'all out here tuning in. Okay. Okay. No, hey, thank you for tuning in. You make sure you continue to tune in. Tell your friends, your baby mama, your baby. I, 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 tell him too. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, support. All things do tell. I've been your host, Charlie Wilson. I'm here with Laugh After Dark, baby. You know how we do it.